All right, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Zozin session. How about that? How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen. Mm. So uh, let's make a little bit of an announcement before we actually start. So uh, real quick, uh, Red Circle live on Twitch and Today we're doing a very special topic. Today we're doing a very special topic. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Cobra Casey, for 27 months of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our Epic Temple OS Club. Welcome to our Epic Temple. So uh, today we're doing Advent of Code 2021. I forgot to actually mention it's 2021 in Temple OS. That's what we're doing. Uh, what it's all about, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Todding. And I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. Somebody sneakily called themselves Pingly. Um, and now I want to ping them, right? But I'm, we're not going to ping them. All right, so the stream has officially started. <laughs> The stream has officially started, and uh, yeah, so today we're starting Advent of Code. And uh, for those who doesn't know, Advent of Code is an annual event where um, basically through, like, starting from December 1st up until December 25th, uh, you're given one problem to solve, right, every day. And it's like basically the Advent calendar, right? So I don't know anything about Advent calendar uh, because I'm coming from the Orthodox world, not from the Catholic one. So uh, I actually, like, before I learned English and actually started to do Advent of Code, I never heard of such concept as Advent Calendar at all in my entire life. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, so just something to uh, to be aware of, right? So I'm coming from a completely different uh, cultural world where this uh, is not a thing, right? So I was actually quite surprised that it's a thing in uh, in Central Europe, in US, uh, probably in Canada. I don't know where where it is, but uh, in, in from the world where I'm coming from, this is not a thing. So I just don't know. It's it's basically like a event calendar, and uh, yeah. So we already did this thing last year. And uh, the challenge of the last year was that uh, I have to use a different language for each individual problem, right? Uh, so let's actually start uh, to, um, you know, keep track of the description. Confix21 uh, says whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop indeed. Thank you so much for two months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic temple. Uh, that's right. Uh, so uh, let's actually start keeping track of the description. So I have a description file from a uh, previous stream. So I think I'm going to actually comment it out. So the stream was about, uh, I think it was a port where we removed overloading, right? So I'm going to actually mark it like this and I'm going to open a new description file. Uh, description ID, this is a reference. And uh, in a reference, I'm going to give the link to Advent of Code. Check it out. Advent of Code. Uh, there we go. Of cool. So check it out. I'm going to actually put that in the chat for everyone who's watching live and for people who's watching on YouTube. You're going to find this thing in the description, of course. Uh, all right. So as I already said, in the previous year, the challenge was to use a different language for each individual day. So uh, and I put all of the solutions in this repo. You can find it in the description as well. Uh, solutions, solutions for advent of CUD 2020. Uh, you can find it in here, and I'm going to copy that in the uh, in the chat as well for anyone who's interested. So the challenge of today's year, as already mentioned in the previous in the announcement, right, is going to be solving all of the problems in Holy See inside of the Temple OS. Uh, for those who never heard about Temple OS, it's a very special operating system. It's a very interesting operating system. It's not like um, it's not like a distribution of Linux or anything like that. It's an operating system that is written from scratch by a very famous person, uh, Terry Davis. Uh, right, so you can find it in here. And uh, of course, I'm going to put that in the description, Temple OS. So here it is. And for anyone who's watching live, I'm going to copy that in the chat. So here it is. Here is the... Uh, here is the link. So uh, one of the things uh, about the author of that uh, operating system is that he suffered through his entire life. I'm not sure if uh, the entire life, but like maybe half of his life uh, from psychophrenia. So uh, if you want to donate to me this month while I'm doing Advent of Code, consider actually donating to the charities down below in here instead. 
right? So there is a couple of charities put in here that do research on uh, how they say, so let me actually quote them, uh, organization working on ease to pain and suffering caused by mental illnesses. So consider donating there instead of me this month. Um, all right, so, and essentially this entire operating system is basically like a Commodore 64, but for a modern computer, right? So that's basically what it is. And what's interesting is that it has a built-in C compiler uh, that, uh, you know, compiles uh, your code just in time. And you can use that C compiler as the shell scripting language of the operating system. And the whole operating system is built on top of that shell uh, language. And that language is called Holy C. Uh, it's a very interesting concept. It's pretty cool. And uh, it's designed for like modern 64, x86, 64 computers, uh, right? So, um, Richie1309, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic temple. Um, cheers, by the way. Just in time and ahead of time. I see. Just ahead of time. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, this is such a, such a cool idea. Like, develop just ahead of time compiler. Yeah, that's actually a pretty cool idea. So, and uh, the whole operating system is just like, like a single ISO file. And what we're going to do on today's stream, um, since usually the first problem of advent of code is like very, very simple. It's just like to warm you up. It's some sort of like hello world. Uh, I'm not probably going to spend too much time on solving it. So, and because of that, I decided to spend the first string setting up the development environment, right? So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to download ISO file of Temple OS. We're going to set up QEMA virtual machine. We're going to install uh, the Temple OS there. We're going to go through the tour. Uh, the Temple OS, by the way, comes with its own tutorial. There's a built-in tutorial. Thank you, uh, Devi, uh, Terry Davis, for building that, this entire thing. So you can go to the tutorial and learn the basics of the operating system. So we're going to do that on the stream. And once we learn the basics of the operating system, how to write programs, we're going to try to solve the first problem. So that's basically the plan of today's stream. It's basically the plan. Uh, okay, thank you so much, everyone who subscribed. D Fra, thank you so much for Twitch Prime and Nata 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 Lift 151. Thank you so much for uh, tier three, two months of tier three. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So uh, let me uh, let me see. Okay, uh, let's go. Uvu. Um, to, to do two. So I'm gonna go in here. And I think I already prepared everything. I think I already downloaded the ISO. You can download that ISO like by pressing this button. And I already prepared everything. So in uh, the folder, AOC 2021. So <laughs> I forgot that I installed SL. Uh, so do, do you guys know what is SL? Have you guys heard about it? So there is a pretty funny, uh, pretty funny command called SL, uh, which stands for Steam Locomotive. Lo locomotive? I don't know how to pronounce that word, but essentially it's a joke command in case you misspell LS, right? So you install it on your machine and every time you misspell LS, you have to wait until the train passes by through your entire screen. And what's funny is that you, you, you cannot cancel it. If you press Control C, it actually blocks Control C. There is literally nothing you can do about it. You have to wait uh, until the end of the thing. <laughs> I keep forgetting that I installed this entire thing. Uh, all right, so we have a Temple OS thingy. And also I have a custom installation of QEMO because the QEMO that comes with Debian is actually kind of buggy, to be fair. Like I have always have a lot of problems with QEMO that comes with Debian. So I usually just build my own QEMO from scratch and install it in a home folder. Uh, right, so we're going to use the QEMO 6.1. I think it's like the latest stable or something like that. And let's actually go ahead and try to run uh, the um, um, the ISO. Let me actually start with the team nukes or something. Uh, God fucking damn it! Why is that a theme of today's stream? I don't really understand. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, I accidentally copy pasted what I actually selected. So I selected the documentation of a cell and then pressed like a button that is responsible for copy pasting or something like that. Holy shit. Uh, anyway, so OPT. 
<laughs> I don't mean to do that. I, I'm not doing that intentionally, by the way. I think I'm a little bit nervous right now uh, because it's uh, like, you know, the, the first the first advent of code. Uh, Kuima X uh, system x86, x84. As far as I know, you just use CD ROM command and you just say temple OS, uh, temple OS ISO, and that should just start the thing. Oh, okay. So this one is interesting. It requires uh, half of a gig of the megabyte of RAM. So I don't remember how you allocate that. I think, uh, let me actually see. Uh, so it's going to be help. Uh, and can I do RAM? Uh, to, 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 to RAM disk. Uh, so memory. Uh, 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 uh. QEMA RAM. How do you do RAM? Because I don't remember. Uh, minus M. Okay, so I'm going to do minus M. Uh, in here, so CD-ROM minus M, 512. Uh, okay, looks like it's okay now. It's loading compiler. Uh, can I actually zoom in? So I can actually zoom in this thing a little bit, but can I just make it uh, fit? Okay, so I can actually uh, make it fit. So it's loading a little bit slower, but maybe this is because I need to set up the uh, KVM thingy. So let me quickly do that. Uh, so just a second. So we need to enable, I think, uh, QEMO KVM. Right. Uh, to, 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 how do I enable KVM? Uh, literally enable KVM. Okay, so for those who doesn't know, KVM is just basically virtualization uh, or something like that. It's just like uses the kernel virtualization thingy. Uh, enable KVM. So maybe it's going to run a little bit faster now. Uh, and I have to do this thing uh, zoom to fit every time. So I think it loads a little bit faster. Okay, so uh, right off the, off the bat, it suggests you to install this entire thing on the hard drive. But the problem here is that we don't have a hard drive. Uh, right, so, and it also suggests you to take a tour. Uh, Walrus Wallace, Wallace, thank you so much for 12 months of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic temple. Um, cheers, by the way. Mm. So yeah, it comes with like this tutorial and there's a lot of like sections in here, like the help system, how to use the help system, the basics, editing and running programs. I think we're going to be interested in the part three because that's literally what I want from Temple OS this month. I want the editing and running programs. I'm not sure if I am that interested in the rest of the things, but we will actually see. Uh, we'll actually see. So for now, I think I need to create the hard drive, right? So where we're going to be installing things. And if I remember correctly, you can create the hard drive. Um, you can create the hard drive by using QEMA uh, image. Yeah, there we go. So you can use QEMA image. Uh, let me see. And how do you even use this entire thing? QEMA image. Uh, QEMA image. So there is a create sub command. You provide the file and you provide the size. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, so let's do um, QEMA image and I'm going to create. Uh, I'm going to create AOC 2021. And uh, as far as I know, it's usually called just imagery. And I'm going to say uh, 512 megabytes. Uh, right, there we go. It, it created an image of, of the size of 112 bytes. I actually need megabytes. Does it support like multipliers or something like that? It does support multipliers. Okay, that's cool. Um, so if I remember correctly, uh, if I remember correctly, to enable, actually this is not particularly convenient, uh, because the camera, the camera actually kind of hides everything, so it does not allow me to uh, easily, um, you know, you know, zoom in and stuff like that. So basically type this command, so it's not particularly convenient. So 112 and... Um, so I think it was HDA, right? It was HDA or something like that. AOC uh, 2021. And there we go. Uh, okay. So it's loading compiler. Okay. So it's kind of annoying that I have to do this uh, zoom to fit. Yeah, I wonder if there is like a flag that always enables it or some sort of like a, um, you know, option in the configuration. Let's actually install this thing. Are you installing inside of VM where QEMA virtual box or similar virtual machine? Yes, I am I'm doing that. It's normal for this freeze, uh, for this to freeze for a moment or two. Okay, let's actually do that. Uh, okay, so I hope it found the hard drive. I hope it did. Mm. 
Is there any benefits using Qima or VirtualBox in Linux? I have no idea, actually. I know nothing about virtual machines, uh, but I just personally like Qima for its simplicity. VirtualBox is just like looks very overcomplicated. I like Qima that it's just a single command that should just run and it just works and creates like a very, very min minimalistic window, and that's it. Uh, VirtualBox is just like it has too many buttons, too many options, and just like really overwhelming for me. So, so right now we're installing uh, Temple OS. Sirimon, what's up? Hi. Mm. Really let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So I suppose it's just like Dune. So the like Terry said that it can freeze for a while, so we should not be scared if it freezes or you know stuff like that. Hello, hello, hello. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, so it's copying files. That's what real installation should be. Just copying files from one, uh, you know, device to another one. That's basically the installation. I'm drinking Earl Gay today, by the way. Streaming is pixelized. Uh, this is probably because there's a lot of moving things uh, in here. So if I switch to a different window, it should not be pixelized. But then we won't be able to see what's going on. We want to be able to see uh, the progress of the installation. So it's quite important. I could do gifted a tier one sub to Serimoon. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, gifting tier one sub. And Serimoon, welcome to our epic Temple OS Club. Yeah. Right. Alrighty, so is it bad that it's like a red or something like that? Mm. I hope we didn't run out of space or something, so hopefully it's fine. Mm. Mm. Anonymous user is gifting 5 tier 1 subs to the community. Thank you so much for gifting 5 tier 1 subs and everyone who's got this up, uh, welcome to our epic sorting community. Um, so I was gonna do two, 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 two for a while, like, at least like five times. So get ready for that. Thirty FPS, by the way, console friendly. It is in fact uh, thirty FPS. I wonder if you can uh, you can get it higher, but maybe it's capped at thirty FPS. Who knows? Mm, what language are you going to use inside Temple OS? There's only one and only language I've, uh, allowed inside of Temple OS. Mm, okay, so it says reboot now. Uh, Let's go ahead and reboot. So it suggests to load. I think it installed it in, into drive C. So we're going to select drive C. And uh, I think, yeah, so when it says uncompressed, uncompressed dictionary, I think it means that um, it, it means we installed everything correctly. And Anonymous is gifting another five tier one subs. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and everyone who's got this up, welcome to our epic community. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Mm. Mm. Alright, so there is another 10, uh, 10 gifted subs, again from the Anonymous, thank you so much for gifting the subs, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, so what we're doing right now, we're just uncom uh, uncompressing the dictionary, whatever that's supposed to mean. So, yeah, just uncompressing the dictionary. <laughs> I'm going to pour another cup of tea while we're waiting for uncompressing dictionary. And uh, I don't know, we're going to try to maybe take a tour. I kind of roughly remember how to use Temple OS because I already did a stream on Temple OS, uh, I think a year ago or two. 
and I roughly remember how to use it, roughly. So it's interesting whether my knowledge is enough to actually do that, uh, to actually, you know, write a program or something like that. But maybe not. Maybe I should not take a chance and just go through the tutorial just to get the gist of how to use the editor and some other stuff. So I think it's a good idea. It's going to be a good idea. Okay, so you can edit existing stuff and it asks you for a tour. All right, so I have an idea. Uh, let me actually try to run this entire thing, but without the CD-ROM to confirm that, uh, you know, we installed this entire thing correctly. So I'm removing the CD-ROM and I'm going to just do that. Uh, all right, so it asks for this. Uh, zoom to fit and uh, I'm going to just do that. All right, so it's loading compiler, and uh, there we go. So it actually loads pretty much instantaneously after it encompasses the dictionary and whatnot. Uh, and cross24x, thank you so much for gifting another subs. Thank you for gifted sub. I think it's like five subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. So uh, there is a lot of com uh, like flags in here, right, as you can see. So I'm thinking, so maybe I should actually create some sort of a script uh, to help me out to run this entire stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do run.sh and in here I'm going to just like write a shell script. Uh, right, so I'm going to copy paste this entire thing in here and also enable the tracing and the errors, right. So then I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make it executable and now if I run this entire thing it just like does that and that's pretty convenient. So I wonder um, if I can just make it zoom to fit uh, like right away. Um, let me let me try to do that. So I'm gonna copy paste this entire thing and I'm gonna try to do uh, help. Uh, right, so this is gonna be help. Uh, and can I do zoom? Uh, 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 um. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Qima zoom to fit. Right. Uh, remember, remember, zoom to fit. Uh, graphical screen does not fit in the screen. Zoom to fit doesn't work with display uh, GTK or something like that. Uh, so there is a full screen option. Uh, right. So, and it kind of corresponds to, um, to this one. Right. So if I try to do like a full screen, is it called full screen? Yes, it looks like it's, it's called full screen. Right, if I do full screen, it starts at full screen. So this is a thing, right? So you can basically provide these options through the command line. I wonder if I can do something like zoom to fit. And it's not a thing. Zoom fit, it's not a thing. Full screen is a thing, but zoom to fit is not a thing. Um, right. <laughs> That's actually kind of sad. Okay, zoom to fit uh, option. Um, zoom to fit uh, GTK. Uh, zoom to fit default. It also suggests default uh, to GTK options. I, I wish there was like a list of all of the options, but it looks like uh, it doesn't print everything. All right, so full screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, full screen, toggle full screen, yeah, I, I just like wish, like, give me the full list so I can just basically control effort and find what I want, but it looks like it doesn't give me everything, unfortunately. Uh, right. So they're talking about zoom to fit, right? So we're getting into the source code. It's it's always a good sign when you're trying to find a user level feature and the only thing you can find is the development patches and diff. It is always a good sign. Trust me, it is very good sign. Uh, so, <laughs> so zoom to fit, uh, it is an option. Grab, uh, grab on hover. Um, mm, 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 mm. Doesn't really tell me how to enable that option, though. Uh, doesn't really tell me. Uh, zoom to fit a command line, maybe a command line. Uh, two, 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 two. Command line. Uh -huh. Change look. Display. Okay, minus display. JTK, zoom to fit on and off. Holy shit, that is so obvious. That was so obvious. Thank you so much, uh, QEMA developers. Very cool. I really appreciate that. And I didn't even find it like, yeah, it's somewhere in the change logs. Uh, all right, so this is gonna be something like own. Uh, Temple OS is more intuitive than this. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Imagine that. Imagine the freaking Temple OS being... Well, obviously it's more intuitive. Obviously. It's created by the best programmer on planet Earth. Obviously, it's more intuitive. Like, why would I even fucking question that? I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so let's do run.sh and uh, let's add this option in here because I don't want to do that all the time. Uh, 64. Uh, and can I just include that? Okay, so this one has to be just on. Uh, there we go. Right, if I run that, uh, it's perfect. So now we can do C. As far as I know, I remember, wait a second, I remember that you can even do boot, right? Uh, boot, and you can say C. This is something that I roughly remember. Uh, no, it, it cannot do that, whatever. Uh, cool, so let's take a tour. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. So what I'm interested in is editing and running programs, right? So uh, this is what we need. And um, my my camera actually, you know, covers uh, covers everything. So let's actually move my camera. So behind my camera, like I can't see behind the camera either, right? Because behind the camera I have um, a terminal, right? So I specifically put some something behind the camera, so uh, it forces me to organize my window so you can see everything. So it's kind of like intentionally, uh, right? So it's a five head move to actually force me to organize everything so you can see everything. All right, so we're starting the tour. Uh, now we're going to demonstrate how to work uh, with programs. We'll change to the uh, slash demo slash games directory. Note that directories are specified with the forward slash, not the backslash. Drives can be specified uh, in a CD command and the boot drive is specified with colon colon. Uh, malloc zone, uh, thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic temple club. All right. so. Uh, uh, enter to complete the command. Okay, so the command here is cd, and as far as I know, each command in Temple OS is essentially like a C function, right? So we're actually calling to a C function. We cd to this directory, and then we uh, print the files within that directory. And that didn't work. Uh, nice one. And the reason why it didn't work is probably because I put the cursor at the beginning of the uh, of the command, like accidentally. And if I press enter in here, it doesn't actually enter this entire thing. And that broke, that soft locked the entire tutorial. <laughs> uh, just in case, just in case, I probably want to actually restart everything. So let's actually restart <laughs> just in case, because who fucking knows? So, uh, all right, so let's take a tour one more time and uh, the editing and running of the program. This is not the thing I wanted. <sighs> this is so annoying. One more time. Take the tour, uh, take the tour and... Okay, so it's kind of difficult because I need to first click to grab the mouse and I don't want to accidentally double click because it will start a wrong tutorial. Okay, editing and running programs. We started the, uh, the right tutorial. Don't press anything. Don't touch anything. If you accidentally put a cursor here, that breaks the tutorial. Okay, press enter. Finally, it worked. Cool. Now we're going to edit a file. Normally, you will probably uh, left click uh, on a directory listing to edit a file, but we're going to type uh, it on the command line. So I can't see shit in this miss, but I think I can just do that. And as you can see, it suggests me to edit this specific file. I'm opening this specific file and this is how it looks like. Uh, all right, so I can't see this stuff. So I have to keep moving it around. This is a first person shooter. There is no main function in Temple OS programs. Any program, uh, program statements outside functions get executed when you uh, include them at the command line. Uh, the Castle Frankenstein uh, statement at the bottom will run the program when, the in when we include it. Okay, that's cool. Uh, press shift escape to abort the editor. Shift escape, we aborted the editor. Okay, now run the uh, Castle Frankenstein HC uh, program. Okay, so this is how I can run it. I can just include the entire file. And there we go, we have a, uh, we have a game running. So this is the game. Uh, move around with the cursor keys and press. Okay, so uh, I can move around and stuff like that, right? So it's a 3D game. <laughs> it's a very uh, AAA game, uh, not gonna lie. Uh, okay, so then I can do shift escape. So I noticed the pattern in here. So every time you want to quit something, right, you have to shift escape this entire thing, right? So, okay. 
Uh, the program is still in the memory and we can start it by typing custom Frankenstein. Okay, so basically it included the file, it uh, compiled everything and we now can use the functions from that program. So I can run it again and I can uh, quit it again. Okay, so I can type a bunch of things uh, and here I don't really care about them, I suppose. So I'm going to press OK. Uh, so now I can edit. Uh, okay, press F5 in the editor to run the file uh, being edited. This is something that I actually need. Right, so F5. So this is what, yeah, there we go. Uh, then press to kill the task and then can do shift escape to abort the application and control alt x to kill the task okay so it still uh, still have task running uh that's pretty cool so this is probably one of the thing like main things that we need we need to be able to cd between the directories and we need to be able to edit files and run the files right so i'm not sure if i need anything else from this tutorial right so i can now uh create programs and i can now just run them and quit so maybe that's that's enough uh, to abort the editor. Okay, explore the demo index you'll find on the menu. It's arranged by difficulty, hit space on a demo. Uh, okay, so I guess that's it, right? So that is basically it. I can barely see the, uh, the cross in here, so I'm gonna just close it and uh, off we go. So now we know how to do this kind of shit. I'm in the home folder, right? Uh, so I wanna create the um, I want to create the folder. So I remember that I had like an auto completion thingy. Let me actually restart the operating system. <laughs> when it doubt, just, just restart the whole thing. Uh, because I do remember that I had auto completion uh, somewhere here. So let's not take a tour. Yeah, there we go. So this is the auto completion. Uh, let me actually move my, uh, my thing down there, right somewhere here. So you can, you can see everything. And I'm going to just move this entire stuff here because it's not particularly convenient that it's up there. So I'm not kind of not used to that. Uh, all right, so can I create a folder? Make dear, uh, right. Uh, so it's gonna be AOC 2021 uh, and there we go. Uh, so the, apparently there is no such thing as make dear or something like that, make dear. Okay, so uh, temple OS. I wonder if the Google is going to be useful for this kind of stuff. Um, make folder. How do you make a folder? Uh, how do you make a directory in, or file? And there's a whole subreddit. There's an official subreddit for temple OS. Dear make, of course. Thank you, Terry. Very cool. In all of the operating system, including Windows and Unix, it's make dear. But of course, here it's dear make because, well, I mean, why would I question divine intellect? Uh, dear make, uh, okay. <laughs> AOC uh, 2021, uh, all right, and there we go. So we can now CD to AOC uh, 2021, uh, and we're there. So can I just do that? And uh, there we go, we have everything. So the next thing I wanna do, I wanna create a simple hello world, I suppose. Uh, so I'm gonna do ED. And I'm going to say hello. And if I remember correctly, the extension for the uh, holy C is HC. So I'm going to just use that. And there we go. We are in the text editor. So I have no idea how to program it, but roughly from some clips uh, that are probably Monkey TOS, um, right? Uh, I remember that you have to do hello world like this. You can just put hello world like a string and that will just work, right? Uh, right, so, and I can do something like F5. Uh, and there we go, we have a hello world. Would you look at that? That's actually super fucking cool. Uh, and then can I do shift escape? Cool. So we wrote hello world. Would you look at that? So how much time did it take us to actually go from like zero to hello world? Uh, right, so it took us half of an hour. Half of an hour. Like think about the usability of the operating system. Right. Well, I mean, I used this operating system before, but it was like more than one year ago, so I forgot everything, uh, right? <laughs> so. And now think about like how difficult it is to get into the Linux, right? So how much time you have to spend to actually set up everything. Here I just installed this, in thing, this thing and in half of an hour I have Hello World. Easy. Freaking easy. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. So let's try to actually do other things. Can I like have a loop 
for by the way can you see the like the programs that i'm typing because the the font is actually very small it's a font for ants and i'm not sure if i can increase it uh, i wonder if i can uh, so let me see can i just zoom in um, um, i don't think so no i don't think so no it's it's just basically it but it's probably because it's uh yeah zoom to fit it's not even oh my god this is so bad right so it was not even checked in here i set this option outside of the ui and in the ui it was not even set even though logically in the program it was set <sighs> anyway so uh can i just do like a classical thing like in c where i just iterate like 10 times um right and just print hello world 10 times uh, I wonder if I can just do it like that. Uh, okay, so it's going to be F5. And something went wrong. Something went horribly wrong. Let's see. Undefined identifier at I. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, you, you don't have int or something like that. Uh, I don't remember the types of temple of Holy See. Holy See types. Let's take a look at types. Language design analysis of Holy See. Uh, there is an example of Holy C on Rosetta code. Would you look at that? <laughs> the fuck? Uh, all right. So Holy C. Uh, okay. So 100 doors. I suppose it does have loops there. So we can steal some stuff from this example. Uh, let me. Oh my God. Why does it take so much fucking time? Modern web. Modern web is unbearable. Like. Okay. Um. So pages in the category hello C, uh, um, not hello C, holy C. Okay. Uh, this is a really bad website, holy fuck. <laughs> uh, all right. So hello C, hello, hello C, holy C. Why do you keep saying it's hello C? All right. Okay. So yeah, you, you have this like U8, I8, I64 or something like that. And I think you cannot define them inside of four. Right, I think you cannot define them inside of four, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna try to use something like uh, i64 and I'm gonna try to run the program and it still doesn't run. So probably have to define uh, the variable outside because I don't quite remember. Like, uh, again, I used it very long time ago. Uh, and there we go. So we have a repeating hello world. How about that? How about that? So maybe we can try to develop something more complicated, like a Fibonacci sequence and whatnot. Uh, let's define two variables. Uh, the first one is going to be zero, the first Fibonacci number, and the second one is going to be uh, one, the second one. And uh, let's say that um, while the first one is less than how much? How, how much we want to put there? Uh, maybe one million? Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Um, we're going to print that A. So I'm going to assume that this printing method where you just like, um, how to say that, put a string as a statement and it just prints it. it I, I would assume that it works like a printf, right? So uh, I'm going to just do D, right? And then maybe a new line in here. Uh, and then uh, just semicolon or something. Uh, I wonder if I can just have I64C where I would do a plus B, right? So this is A plus B. Uh, and then B will be equal to A, uh, right? So I think I think it ha uh, has to be this, uh, the other way around. A equal to B and B is going to be equal to C. There we go. Uh, and I wonder how I can I remove uh, like a whole line? Uh, apparently I can't just remove the whole line. So I will probably have to like learn how to use this text editor like off screen or something. But I hope this is the code that will work. So let's actually try to run it. And it didn't like that uh, because I forgot to actually provide the thing that I need to uh, to run. So let's actually put A in here. Can I run it? And it kind of worked, uh, but yeah, it didn't at the same time uh, because I have no idea what the hell has happened. Right. So I wonder what the fuck has happened. Mm, it only prints one and it loops forever. Oh boy, uh, so here's the zero, here's the one, uh, here we do that until this thing is less than one million, right, then I try to print this thing, uh, all right, and then C is equal A plus B, which is going to be one, right, it's going to be one, 
then I assign A to B to A, which will make A 1. Uh, and then I assign B to C, which is going to be 1. So the, on the next iteration, it should be fine. Uh, right, so it's kind of weird. So I'm thinking maybe I should actually define uh, this thing somewhere here, right? So maybe I have to predefine this entire stuff. Now it works. Oh my god! We're off to a great start! So if I define this variable in here, this doesn't work for whatever freaking reason. I have no idea why. Right, so maybe it doesn't support like a scope defined variables or something like that. That's fine, but why did it compile then? Right, and if I put this thing in here, i sixty four c, it works. I mean, that's fine. I can just define all of my variables at the top of the program and just use that. Like, I just it's simply unclear why it wouldn't work. Uh, right, <laughs> so I mean, I'm not going to question the divine intellect, right? So it's definitely not a bug. It is definitely not a bug, it's probably a feature, and there's probably a good uh, divine reason behind that feature. We just don't know it yet, because we don't have a divine intellect. Uh, Alright, so, yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, 0007, that's fast. This is probably because um, we're using KVM, right? And I would presume that through KVM, it's going to be like running on a native speed, maybe. I'm not really sure, but yeah. So we enabled KVM for, for QEMA, so it should actually run pretty fast. So that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm super happy with what I see in here. Uh, so maybe we should attempt to solve uh, Advent of Code problem day one. Uh, so I, I suppose we have everything because we can just run things. So should we try it? Should we just go ahead and try a problem? Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Ah, okay. Uh, so here is the first problem. I've never seen, I've never read that problem before. So I'm opening this problem for the first time. I probably should log in with my like GitHub account or something. So this is going to be my first impression, first row an edited impression of the problem. So is it going to be difficult? Is it going to be hard? I don't know, but since it's a first problem, it's supposed to be relatively easy, right? So not, they're not going to start with something super difficult. Uh, hopefully, I, I don't freaking know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so day one, sonar sweep. You're minding your own business on a ship at sea when the overboard alarm goes off. You rush to see if you can help. Apparently, one of the elves tripped and accidentally sent the sleigh keys flying into the ocean. So before you know it, you're inside a submarine. <laughs> the elves keep ready for a situation like this. Um, okay, it's covered in Christmas lights, uh, because of course it is. And it even has an experimental antenna that should be able to track the keys if you can boost its signal strength high enough. There is a little meta that indicates that uh, the antenna signal strengths by, dis uh, by displaying zero, five stars. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, every time you solve a problem, the, the strength is increasing. So, okay. Uh, you're in, your instincts tell you that in order to save Christmas, you will need to get all 50 stars by December 25th. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck! Uh, so, as the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean, it automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby seafloor. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report your puzzle input appears. Okay. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report your puzzle in input appears. Each line is a measurement of the seafloor depth as the sweep. Oh shit! We'll have to put the file into the Temple OS. I forgot about that. So the the input is probably going to be huge. So we won't be able to just like oh fuck, shit, fuck, damn. <laughs> ah, all right. 
Um, each line is a measurement of the sea floor depth as the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. For example, suppose you had the following report, right? So we have this kind of shit. Uh, this report indicates that scanning outwards for the submarine, the sonar sweep found depth, uh, basically this depth, right? So it uh, scans um, outwards, okay, and so on. The first order of the business is to figure out how quickly the depth increases, just so you know what you're dealing with. You never know if the keys will get carried into uh, deeper water by an ocean uh, current or a fish or something. To this discount, the number of times uh, a depth uh, measurement increased from the previous measurement. This is actually pretty straightforward. There is no measurement before the first measurement. Uh, and in the example above, the changes are the following. Okay, so this increased, increased, decreased. Okay. In this example, there are seven measurements that are larger than the previous measurement. How many measurements are larger than the previous measurement? This is actually pretty straightforward. But if I take a look at the input, it's probably freaking huge. Uh, right, so I won't be able to just type it in into my, into my thingy. So I'll have to... I have to find a way to maybe mount the current hard drive and just like do something, do something with that. So yeah, we'll have to figure it out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It would be kind of cool if I could just download that, but we don't have any uh, internet access on the Temple OS. Unfortunately, and I also have no idea how to read files from the Temple OS. But again, so today's stream is just basically learning and setting up the development environment. So that should be fine. That should be fine. Uh, okay, so I'm going to quickly close Temple OS and I'm going to basically grab my file. Uh, where is the, where is this entire thing? Okay, so let me actually bring it back in here and I'm going to get my puzzle input. So this entire thing sounds pretty, pretty easy to do. Right. So let me see. So this is going to be input txt, right? And I wonder where I want to. I'm going to use ed because it's a little bit easier to do it this way. Uh, right. So then I just do that, and uh, then I say this entire thing, and then I just quit. So input txt, input txt. So there we go. Cool. Uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent Hoax, uh, thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic Temple OS Club. All right, so the real question is, uh, can I just like take this piece of shit and mount? Uh, that's the real question. Uh, so it is a DOS MBR boot sector partition. So maybe we can just mount that thing. Can I go ahead and mount it? All right, so we create MNT and mount uh, AOC 2021 MNT. Uh, and uh, do I have to do sudo? Because I'm mounting it on a user space, right? So maybe I can do that without the sudo. Only Rook can do that. Okay, so cool. Uh, so. Uh, okay, so it says some bullshit that I cannot see. Wrong FS type, bad option, bad super block on def loop zero, missing code page or help program or other errors. So everything's bad. <laughs> what an error message, holy shit. <laughs> everything's wrong. Everything's wrong. Everything's bad. No, you cannot do that. No, no, bad, bad. Error, error. Ah! Holy shit. That's very intense error. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> Um, temple, uh, temple OS QEMA raw image. I think we're using QEMA raw image. Uh, so and uh, like mount, maybe Linux mount, right? Linux mount. We'll see. Uh, two, 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 two. So mounting raw or Q cow, uh, QEMA image, but we don't have a Q cow. I think I didn't create uh, specifically Q cow. Right, so maybe we'll have to create a QCow. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, support center, hpe.com, that doesn't even load. Very cool. Very, very cool. Mm, go away. Uh, next one, how to mount a QEMA virtual disk image. Okay. Uh, so, let's say you discover critical business data in a legacy DOS spreadsheet file and Excel can't read the file. If the legacy program originally ran on DOS, you might boot a copy of free DOS and install the legacy program there to extract the, uh, or export the data or uh, to a common file format, like a comma-separated CSV file. Uh, 
Uh, you can follow our instructions to install and boot free DOS using QEMA virtual machine, okay? You can mount a QEMA disk image using two basic methods, using an offset to mount the image directly or using the uh, libguest lib FS tool package. That sounds interesting. So, uh, using an offset. Linux, uh, Linux can mount QEMA's raw image uh, disk image uh, raw disk image format assuming it knows where to find the start of the C drive this is very interesting um, uh, partition on the virtual disk the virtual disk can contain multiple partitions but uh, for most legacy operating system installations like DOS you probably only have one partition this is the C drive let's look at the output from the Linux FD command using the minus L option uh, using the minus L option will list uh, the partitions on the virtual disk okay so let's give it a try i suppose it's going to be f disk uh, f disk minus l aoc and it doesn't auto complete why it doesn't auto complete because i don't have a f disk okay i have no idea I, I think like it should be available on all of the installations and uh, it's already installed thank you debian very cool and i know exactly what the fuck is going on Right, because it's available in SBIN, because it's supposed to be the, the administrator level tool, right? So, and it's put in SBIN and it's only available when you do uh, sudo, but outside of sudo, it doesn't work. And it's actually a very common theme in Debian, right? I encountered a lot of problems because of this Debian mentality, and I've even seen a lot of like workarounds in like applications. Uh, because of that mentality, like it's a really weird decision, but th this is Debian for you for whatever freaking reason. So yeah, so we have to do it like that, I suppose. Can I can I just do that? <laughs> uh, and it still doesn't auto complete properly, but uh, at least it works. Like F disk doesn't have to be run at sudo, right? So what if I have like a user level uh, image that I want to run it on? So yeah, you have to do, do that explicitly. Um, all right. So what do we have in here? Um, I wonder what is an offset though. Uh, so here is uh, some partition. I suppose maybe this is the offset. Uh, right, so this could be the offset 63. Uh, okay, uh, cool. Here, the C drive is the first and only partition on the on the virtual drive, listed as image image one. To determine the offset of the C drive, you need to know the starting sector of that partition. The output from F disk shows this as 63. It's also 63 in our case. Maybe that's the offset. Okay. To so calculate the offset, you also uh, you also need to know the sector size. The virtual disk image has sectors of. Uh, 112 bytes right so do we what, do we know what the sector size um i'm not really sure so i suppose maybe uh yeah so sectors it's also it's it's the same essentially it's the same numbers actually you calculate the offset uh, as the product of the offset and sector and there we go you have this thing um okay use the offset value to mount the virtual disk so i suppose we can just literally use the same thing at least try uh and see how it goes so we need to create a folder tmp dos and then mount loop offset uh, blah 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 tmp dos and then ls sounds doable sounds doable maybe we'll be able to do that okay so can i just like uh i already have mnt uh mount uh to do o loop offset right i'm gonna literally use the same offset uh we actually had two partitions in here as you can see uh, but I'm going to just ignore that one and maybe try to mount that one later, right? So if the first one doesn't work, we can try to mount that one. Uh, so because in, in case of this one, I don't have to do any work at all. So it should be fine. Uh, and uh, then what I need to do, AOC and uh, MNT, right? So I'm mounting it to MNT. And of course, you have to be uh, root and it worked. It didn't even complain. What the fuck? Holy shit! I mounted! I actually fucking mounted! This shit just worked! So, yeah, so if you're interested in how to do that, I'm gonna put that in the description, I suppose, right? So I have to put that in references. Okay, uh, how to mount the uh, Temple OS uh, disk, I suppose, right? So, yeah. 
That was actually pretty useful, and it doesn't didn't even require to do anything. Uh, so that's pretty pog uh, for anyone who's interested. So this is a good tutorial, right? This is a good tutorial. Uh, okay, so let me see. It has root access, right? So I'm not sure if we'll be able to just edit it manually, but we'll see. Uh, okay, so here's the home, and we have AOC. Uh, AOC. Can I just create something like uh, hello mom? Uh, I cannot do that, right? So if I do sudo hello mom, I manage to create hello mom. And the real question here is when I go and, um, you know, run the temple OS, I suppose I will have to maybe and mount it first, right? Uh, so let's actually do it like this, run.sh, and I'm gonna try to run it. Will it work? That's the real question. It kind of worked, but I'm kind of scared to actually modify it. Can I like have it mounted and modified it from the virtual machine simultaneously? That's the real question here. So will it break a lot of shit? Because so far QEMA doesn't complain, so Everything seems to be fine. So let's give it a try. So here is the deer. Maybe I have to put this thing. I'm going to go into AOC. And by the way, the cool thing about Temple OS is that I can just click on the folders, right? I don't have to use the con. And here we go. We have a hello mom. Uh, would you look at that? Uh, just a second. I need to. Ah. Oh boy. Uh, okay. So and then I have to do it like that. There we go. So we have a hello mom. So let's actually try to edit hello mom. Uh, not a text file. That is very interesting. I cannot just like edit it for whatever freaking reason. Maybe this is because it doesn't have an extension. Huh. That could be the case. Okay. So let me let me see what we can do about that. Uh, so home AOC uh, AOC twenty twenty one, and I'm gonna try to move hello mom to hello mom txt. I'm gonna use the capital letters just in case. Uh, right, we're gonna do sudo, and I'm gonna go back, uh, and I'm gonna try to run that. Maybe it just wants a specific ex extension. Uh, all right, so let's do it like this, and I'm gonna do a dir aoc aoc. Uh, okay, so it still has hello mom, and can I click on that thing? It still says not a text file, which is a shame, I think. Uh, which is kind of Oh, it still opened it. It just like threw a warning, but it still opened it. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to try to do the following thing. I'm going to say hello from God's temple. Right, hello from God's temple. How do you save everything? Uh, I, for I forgot how you save files in the text editor. <laughs> Shit. Temple OS editor save file. Uh, very, uh, very brief, okay. Uh, uh, save. Save changes, control C. Okay, so we can just do control C, I suppose. All right, did it save it? Hopefully. So if I try to open it one more time, will it be there? Uh, not the text file, okay. And it's still there, okay. Everything seems to be fine. Now I'm gonna close this entire thing and I'm gonna go into MNT. Uh, all right, so home ad advent of code, and I'm gonna do cut hello txt. There is nothing there, so it didn't actually save anything. Didn't actually save anything, which is kind of sad. Maybe uh, this is because uh, we have to unmount it first, right? So to make the changes visible. I have a feeling that we have to unmount it first, right? Uh, all right, so let's do you mount MNT. Uh huh. Okay, cool. So if I take a look at MNT right now, so it's completely unmounted, and let's run this entire thing one more time. Mm hmm. Uh, to 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 to. Control C. Uh, uh, Control S, not C. I'm Russian. Uh, in Russian language, C is a S letter, and my brain actually confuses them. I press Control S. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just said it as Control C. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I, Russians confuse these letters all the time, don't worry about it. So, but I press the right one, I do remember that. Okay, so here's the hello txt, and okay, now it is working. Uh, hello world, and I'm gonna press control S, I'm pressing control S, hopefully, right? And if I try to open it one more time, it is there, okay. Pressing control S, uh, and uh, now I'm gonna do it like this. Okay, so I need to mount it one more time. 
uh, probably want to actually save this command uh, somewhere, right? So I do, do I want to save sudo as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to save sudo as well. Uh, let's create mount sh, right? So mount s. This is not what I wanted to copy, actually. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, I wanted to copy this thing uh, and bin sh set xe. All right, cool. Oh, it would be also kind of cool to uh, to have a script that also installs and creates this image, right? So we have a script that installs and creates the image. We're gonna have a script that runs the machine, and we have a script that mounts the hard drive, so we can put something in there. And I might as well actually share all of these scripts, uh, you know, publicly on GitLab or GitHub or whatever, right? So yeah, I think yeah. So we we have something to share today. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, all right, uh, ch mod plus mount uh, mount sh right, and I'm gonna just try to do mount, and it mounted the thing um, right, and I'm gonna go into the mount. Uh, so home uh, aoc aoc hello mom, and if I take a look at hello mom, there we go, hello world, and at the end we have e, whatever is that supposed to mean. It's maybe some sort of like a special ending for uh, for Temple OS. I don't know. So no end lines though. It's kind of weird. Mm -mm. Add unmount MNT on start. That's actually a good idea. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Force an E. Um, all right. So at least we can exchange information between the uh, between the virtual machines and stuff like that. Okay. So I'm going to try to copy um, input, right? Where is the input? Do I have the input? Um, hmm, so here is the input and I'm going to copy it in here, right? So it's going to be sudo and we've got the, we've got the input. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Mm -hmm. And you mount uh, MNT, but I'm gonna do you mount automatically, maybe a little bit later. Okay, so if I do ls uh, MNT, right? So we'll get that, and if I'm gonna try to run this thing, and let's go ahead and do that. All right, take a tour. No, uh, I'm gonna CD. Um, I'm gonna just do that. I'm gonna use the mouse. We're in 2021, uh, and if I try to edit the input txt. Uh, what we're going to have in here, not a text file. Are you sure about that, buddy? Okay, so here's the input from the website. So we got the input from the website into the into the system. That's pretty cool. I wonder if I can uh, rename the entire thing. So there should be some sort of a command that called that is called mv or maybe move. Okay, there is a move command. So and let me see. Uh, it takes uh, move file from one location to another uh, or rename. Uh, <laughs> that's actually a pretty cool implementation. Look at that. Look at that. It just copies and delete the previous one. So though on operating systems like Linux, moving is faster than copying because I presume because of the file system, right? The only thing it changes is just changes the inode information, right? And that's why moving is usually like instantaneous within the single file system. But here, if you have a huge file, uh, to move file from one location to another one, it's, it's going to literally copy it by by byte. Uh, but I'm not sure. It depends on how copy is implemented. It's actually a very interesting question. So and if I do copy, right, so here's the copy, I can try to look into the copy. All right, and copy is uh, all right. So yeah, it, it copies stuff. It copies chunks and stuff like that, I suppose, right? Copy file, if the name ends uh, in Z, it will be stored compressed. If not .z, it will be stored uncompressed. Um, I really like how self-explorable Temple OS is, right? I have a command. I can not only look up the documentation of the command, I can see the implementation of the command. How fucking cool is that? It's like, it's almost like using Emacs. It's like, if Emacs was an actual operating system, like an actual kernel, and instead of uh, Elisp, you had uh, Holy C, 
This is actually so cool. I really like the self-explored systems, right? Where you can just like take take it apart and see how it works and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. Um, all right. So uh, what I want you to do, I want you to actually move uh, input, um, right? So this is move uh, input txt, and I just want you to move it to uh, input txt capital thingy, right? So if I take, take a look at this now, right uh i should be able to just open it and it doesn't complain about not being text okay that is very cool um so the next thing i want to do i want to be able to like open a file and read from a file the question is how do you do that in holy c this is something that we'll have to learn um Mm. So Terry was a great guy. His mental condition got to him. Yeah. So it's actually really, really freaking sad. He's a genius, but yeah. So and again, I just, I just want to mention: if you consider, if you're thinking to donate me to support me this month, instead of donating to me, consider supporting the charities that are listed in the Temple S website. Uh, right. So if you go to the to the official website of Temple S, the, the bottom of the Temple S. Um, right, there is a couple of charities in here, so I really recommend to donate there instead. Um, all right, so let me see. So uh, luckily, there is a lot of information out there. There is like a community around the separating system, so we can try to Google up how to read file. Uh, holy uh, C read file. Can we find any useful information on that? Uh, x86, 64 Linux assembly reading files. Uh, the language bar says holy C setup. I'd love to see holy C ported to Linux. Function prototype complete uh, concordance. Uh, holy s holy sc scriptures. <laughs> okay, so that's that's kind of it's kind of interesting. Uh, all right, so let me let me think. So some of the things we can do actually, we can try to guess how the functions are called right so i suppose maybe the function is called open uh right open file or maybe file uh open right uh no they're not called like that uh so there's a file there's a file write and file read right but i suppose they accept oh shit that's actually super cool read the whole file from disk this is not bad. Maybe that's what I need. So it just allows me to read the whole file from, from disk and returns it as a string. And the question is, does it is it null terminated or something like that? Um, yeah, we can just do that and I can just parse it myself. Um, that would be actually kind of cool. So... Mm -mm -mm -mm. So file write, file read. So, yeah, uh, let me see. Uh, is there any functions for working with strings? String, uh, str, str len, str copy, str cmp, uh, str chr maybe, something like, str chr, there's no such thing. So maybe some of the string uh, functions I'll have to like actually write myself, but anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a file day one. Right, so ed day zero one hc. Uh, right, I'm gonna open the first day, and uh, one of the things I want to try to do, I want to maybe file uh, read. Right, I'm reading the file, and the file that I want to read, I want to read uh, input txt. Right, so this is the input txt file. I suppose it doesn't accept anything else. Uh, right. Uh, Everything else here is optional. Uh, so we have size in here. Uh, oh, it will return you the size of the... Okay, this is something that we actually want. Right. So you can read the file and it will also return you the size of that file. Uh, Yeg Fellow, I, ho I hope I'm pronouncing the nickname correctly. Thank you so much for Twitch Prime Television. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our Epic Temple Club. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Somebody on, on YouTube asked me a very good question. How many epic clubs do I have? I have a lot of them, actually. Uh, so, all right. Uh, let, me, let me see what we've got. 
So I'm definitely going to spend some time getting used to this operating system off screen, right? So I'm going to maybe uh, go through more tutorials and stuff like that uh, because I want to get comfortable because I'm going to be developing in it for the entire month. So it's not particularly convenient. So it will return the size, it will turn the attributes and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so size is I64, right? So I64 size, we're going to put it in here. So, and I'm going to provide it in here. So here's the size. And we're going to print something like uh, size of input txt. Input txt is, uh, I suppose I can just put d in here and I hope it will just work, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's actually do f5. And it couldn't do that. File not found input txt. Okay, so it couldn't find that file for whatever reason, uh, even though it's right there. So maybe I have to put like a sl uh, dot slash or something to be able to actually read this entire thing. Uh, wait a second. Wait. So just, uh, 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 dear, like this. So this is a day one, uh, day one. Uh, and let me try. So I suppose it is very important to do something like this. Okay, file not found. Uh, so is it backslashes? I think it's forward slashes, right? Um, so at whole path, I, do I really have to, is there like a relative path in there? In there? Um, so it's kind of, I, I can try, I mean, sure. C slash uh, home, uh, right? So, but I'm not sure. Uh, control S and I'm going to do it like that. So home. Oh, it is running in home. Yeah, I see. I see what's going on. That's really weird. Why would it why would it run in home though? Um I mean I can just copy the input uh txt to home. Uh right. So can I just do something like this? Uh okay, so we'd copy it in there, and if I do dear uh like this, uh we do have a, uh, the txt file in there if I open it like that and if I do f5 it actually worked uh, so when it says uh, the input of txt is this and then I forgot to put uh, a new line in there so I think I have to put a new line in here so I do this uh, size of this thing is basically nine kilobytes so it managed to read the whole thing uh, thank you so much mcq8 for tier one subscription thank you thank you thank you uh, what I'm thinking is that like is there like a built-in features, built-in things for parsing files, or do I have to implement everything myself? Uh, I don't mind implementing everything myself, but it would be kind of cool if there was something. Uh, so I can try to uh, see, scan F, scan. Uh, so there's a scan character, scan key, or some stuff like that. So it's not what I think it is. Uh, right, parse. Uh, so there's the str. Okay, the cool thing here is that we can try to go into these functions and it will lead us to a file, uh, right? So this it's a part of the kernel. Um, it will lead us to a file that contains other related functions. Uh, so we have str len, uh -huh. mm -mm -mm -mm. string length. And I suppose it's like null terminated, so it's not what I think it is. Um, mm, 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 so read the ports, uh -huh. so there is a swap, a maximum and stuff like that. So there's a lot of like useful functions and whatnot. So one of the, th okay, I can parse it myself, but I need a function that converts a string to an integer. Can I do a to i, uh, a to uh, maybe s to i. So I just don't know how Terry would call that. Mm, str to uh, okay, so I'm gonna just assume that it just doesn't exist. So all right, uh, str to okay, thank you, thank you so much. str uh, to i64. Okay, that's actually perfect. So and the question is, what does it accept? Uh, it accepts probably null terminated thing. Oh, it acts okay. It acts like str to d, uh, right? So it even has an end pointer and whatnot. All right, so I, I do know what the fuck is going on in here. This is actually super convenient. So we can try to use that. 
Right. So we, we read the whole file into the buffer, right? Then uh, we can just use this function to constantly read the next, uh, the next number, right? We constantly read the next number and uh, we advance until we reach the end or something like that. So, yep, I think that's a good idea. Uh, though it's kind of sad that file read doesn't put like a new line at the end, but uh, I don't know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm, all right. So you know what? I think I want to make a small break because I've been programming for I've been setting this entire thing up for how much for for an entire hour. So let's actually make a small break, and after the break, we're gonna try to parse that file. And once we manage to parse that file, we will try to solve the problem, right? So the only thing we need to do we need to get that data into the holy see. What am I drinking? I'm drinking Earl Gay tea. Uh, okay, let's make a small break and. Right, so let's go ahead and try to parse the entire file and uh, see how it goes. Uh, so file read will return the string. I suppose the string is returned like this. Can I just extend the entire... I can actually do that. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, so this is going to be str, right? So here is the str. Uh, and I wish I could just like um, delete the lines somehow but I don't remember. So there was like a cheat sheet for the editor somewhere. Uh, so this is how you do that, cheat sheet. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, Temple OS editor, uh, cheat sheet. Any cheaters in the chat forcing CD? Uh, all right, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to go through the tutorial one more time, but I don't want to spend time on that. Um, all right. So I suppose uh, str to i64, right? So it accepts also end pointer. And we need to keep doing this thing until we reach the end of this entire stuff, right? Until we reach the end of this entire stuff. But that is really tricky. Uh, that is really tricky. So how does it determine the end? Uh, right. So while true, uh, if we encounter that, that, and that, uh huh, uh huh. So I just want to see if it tries to identify like a zero or null terminator of some sort. Uh, a continue. So it's one of those. I don't see the null terminator though. Uh, white spaces okay it removes the white spaces or whatnot so it's going to be minus this and zero and if it's something else you do that uh if right is that oh maybe it doesn't even need to do the zero thing it doesn't even need to do that because it stops and at any non-digit or something that doesn't fit into the definition of the number it doesn't even need to check for the null termination. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know why I brain farted so much on this. Uh, so an anonymous user gifted a tier one sub to Terry A. Davis Temple. <laughs> Thank you so much, an anonymous user, for gifting a sub to Terry A. Davis. As far as I know, it's an account that actually like streams the archive of Terry uh, developing Temple OS, right? I, I think. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for gifting it up. Uh, right. I, I think it's an official one even or something. Depends on the definition of official in that particular case. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. So, and I suppose the input TXT actually also ends with a new line, hopefully, right? It should end with a new line. And that is how we're going to know that uh, we reach the end, right? So, um, all right. Um, that makes sense. It kind of makes sense. Uh, so I64. So we provide the str, then I provide the radix, and then I need to provide the pointer to the end. Right, so we need to keep track uh, of the end. Uh, U8, this is the end, and that's the pointer to the end. So end seems to be a keyword, so maybe I'm not allowed to use that, uh, just in case I'm going to put end p in here. Uh, and I'm going to use end p in here, so I'm not going to initialize this thing. Okay, cool. So str uh, is going to do that, and now I need to establish. Uh, I need to establish the um, 
the loop, right? Up until what point I'm going to loop? That is a very, very interesting question. Up until what point? Uh, because, um, so we sort of like advance this thing. Uh, end point becomes a new stuff. So we can do something like while size is greater than zero, right? While size is greater than zero, uh, we're going to try to do that. And uh, I'm going to just assign it to X and X is I64, right? So this is basically the X, um, right? And then uh, end, we can take the end P and subtract the string. And that essentially gives us how much of the characters, how many characters we consumed, which we can quite easily subtract from the size, right? So yeah, and that's how we update the loop. And uh, hopefully that will work, maybe. Uh, so there will be some problems uh, with like end, um, the, the new lines and stuff like that, but maybe we can just adjust this condition, maybe up until uh, size is greater than one. Uh, if it becomes one, we know that only one new line left. So yeah, maybe that's going to be the case. So, and on each thing, uh, I'm going to just print that number, right? So I'm going to just do uh, D new line x and hopefully this is a sufficient uh, sufficient program to actually parse everything so let's try to run this thing and it didn't work and well at least it parsed the first character right it parsed the first character uh and uh let me see what we can do about that i forgot to assign end pointer to the str so S uh, end pointer is the new str uh, str equal and p. So, and this is how we're gonna actually do this entire thing. And we parsed all of the numbers, I suppose. So, uh, some of them became like zero or something, right? You see, uh, I think this is precisely the problem I was talking about, right? It's the problem of the last uh, character. So, I think we can try to solve that by basically uh, rising it to one. And if I try to run it one more time, there we go, we don't have any extra characters. So, the last one was 8341. Let me actually confirm that it's 8341. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, I think we managed to parse all of the characters, believe it or not. That was actually pretty easy. Uh, and it's kind of cool that they can just read the whole file into the memory and that's it. I wonder if I have to free this entire thing, um, because maybe every time I run this program, it leaks a little bit of memory, but uh, we're in 2021. Just buy more RAM, okay? Let it leak, let it leak, let it leak, oh, let it leak. Memory costs nothing. Let it leak. Okay, so I think uh, according to the definition of the problem, we don't even have to um, store that array, right? So we can just like store the previous value, right? We just need to store the previous value and we need to count how many times like uh, this thing increased. Uh, to, 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 um, alrighty, let's go ahead and do that. I'm a little bit nervous, I'm a little bit nervous. I can actually take a look at the implementation of file read. Maybe uh, there's something uh, said there uh, about uh, memory stuff. Uh, so this window is really annoying and I have a constant urge to close it. But at the same time, it is extremely useful because it shows out a completion. And I'm just afraid that if I close it, I won't know how to bring it back. So <laughs> it is really, really scary. Like. I hate this window, but at the same time, it provides the useful information. So I'm just going to keep it in here and just like suffer. Uh, so <laughs> I hate it. Anyway, so does it allocate any memory? All right. So it uses like free, free. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So if there is a function free, okay, here's the malloc. Here's the malloc. Uh huh. So this is the res and what it returns. Uh, it returns the rest, which it actually mallocked. Uh, Defense subscribed with a tier 1 subscription for 15 months. Thank you, thank you so much. And welcome to our epic Temple OS Club. Okay, so it uses malloc, right? It uses malloc. Uh, and uh, malloc just allocates some stuff, right? And then you have to free it. So 
According to my understanding, according to my limited understanding, uh, we probably have to do free STR. But the problem here is that we lost STR, right? We kind of lost it. So I think I'm going to actually create like a separate variable. This is going to be start. Um, okay. Maybe I'm going to call it begin instead. Begin. Okay, so that's fine. And then I'm going to just assign you str to begin and uh, then I'm going to do the parsing, right? So I'm doing the parsing and then I'm going to free free the begin, right? Okay, so that way we're not going to leak any precious memory. To be fair, I just realized that we are in a virtual machine, right? We are in a virtual machine. That means we probably want to free the memory, right? Mm -mm -mm. Alt W will open out a complete window. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so if I try to do the... Uh, debated by the chat uh, and it didn't do anything it it doesn't open the autocomplete window you literally just debated me uh, should not listen to the chat chat debated yet again um, doesn't bring it back doesn't bring it back anyway so you know what you have to do in this particular case you know what you have to do in this particular case you reset the, the whole operating system Never listening to chat ever again. Uh, that's for sure. So let's not take the tour. Uh, and uh, let me take a look uh, this thing. And AOC, AOC, AOC. Uh, day one. We didn't lose uh, anything. So I'm going to F5 and everything's fine. At least nothing crashed. Well, to be fair, if something crashes within Temple OS, your entire operating system crashes. So you would know. Right. So that's that's fine. Uh, okay, so we need to um, probably define some sort of a counter, right? So this is going to be the answer, uh, right? So this is the answer, and I really don't like that ants is already taken. Uh, 0x grant 27 um, gifted, donated, I suppose, uh, 100 bits. Thank you so much for 100 bits. I really appreciate that. So this is the answer, and this is initially going to be zero. Uh, also, what I want to do... I want to store a previous value, right? We're going to have uh, I64 and we're going to store the previous one. But here's an interesting thing. At first, we don't have a previous value. So I think we're going to indicate the lack of a previous value as minus one. So this is going to be like a negative saying that there is no previous value or anything like that. Uh, okay, so in here, instead of printing this entire thing, what we're going to do? Uh, what we're going to do if previous is greater or equal than zero and x um okay so x is greater uh than the previous right then we're going to uh take the answer and increment that answer right and after that uh after that i'm gonna assign uh x to the previous right so i parse this entire thing uh then i basically analyzed it and then i advanced the the rest of the stuff so after that uh, i should be able to print the answer so let's go it's going to be a 0 D and uh, answer. Uh, there we go. And if I uh, try to run this entire thing, it's 1581. Is that a correct answer? Is that a correct answer? I don't know. I have no idea. 1581. First try, mother flipper. How about that? Freaking first try. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> we actually did it. I didn't expect that. Holy shit, that's cool. So let's take a look at the part two. Um, uh, part two, electric boogaloo. Oh boy, this already sounds like fun. Uh, considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you expected. There is just too much noise in the data. Instead, consider the sums of a three measurement sliding window. Again, considering the above example, A, A, B, A, B, C, a B, C, D, and, uh, okay, so it also, like, rolls around or something. Um, so, three measurement window. Okay, start by comparing uh, the first and second three measurement window. Ooh, start by comparing the first and second three measurement window. The measurement in the first window are marked A, uh, 2028. 20, Their sum is 607. The second window is 2028. 20, uh -huh. The sum of the measurement in the second window is larger than the sum 
Not the first, so the first comparison increased. Your goal now is to count the number of times the sum of the measurements in this sliding window increases from the previous sum. So compare A with B, then compare B with C, then C with D, and so on. Stop when there aren't enough measurements left to create a new three measurement window. So basically we have a rolling th uh, window of three elements and we just like go and uh, see if something increases or not. Uh, the sum of each measurement uh, window is as follows. Okay, in the example, the five sums uh, that are larger than the previous sum, blah, blah, blah. How many sums are larger than the previous sum? Looks reasonable. So 19, mm -hmm. then 20, 28, 10. Uh huh. So I, I do understand what this text is saying. I do understand it. I don't understand these graphics. What the fuck is going on in here? Like, seriously. <laughs> like, yeah. <O> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, a, B, uh, A, B, C. So how does that correspond to whatever is written in here? Um, all right. And then this basically removes that and... All right. AC, like, why is it written in such a weird way? <laughs> so what? This is so weird. Like, I, I, like it doesn't even explain. This explains it, but this is doesn't doesn't make any sense. Um, it shows the position of each window. It shows the position of each window. Where position? Where? This is bizarre. This is the most bizarre graphic I've ever seen. Okay, so anyway, let's actually try to code that. Uh, all right, so what do we have in here? I, I suppose we need to do the same process, right? So, but we have to just have a different thing in here. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to wrap this entire stuff into uh, its own function, uh, u0, and this is going to be basically part one, uh, right? So I'm going to just wrap this entire thing into part one. Uh huh. There we go. Uh, and I'm not gonna actually call this part one. Um, mm, 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 mm. Right. If I try to run this thing, uh, it doesn't do anything. That's cool. Uh, but if I do part one like so, I don't even have to provide the parentheses, right? So it it prints the answer in here. Uh, might as well actually maybe do something like uh, part one and just print it like that and does it work yes it does in fact work so now i should be able to do something like this uh comment it out and do part two electric boogaloo uh u zero uh part two right i'm gonna do it like that so i literally need the same process pretty much um mm -mm. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So uh, now, uh, can I just copy paste this entire thing? Uh, I should be able to. So the reason why my code looks like shit is not because I'm a bad programmer. I mean, I'm a bad programmer, but that's not the reason. Uh, the reason is because I don't know how to use this text editor. I wish there was like a way to auto indent everything, but I don't want to go for each individual line. So that's why I just don't indent this entire thing. Uh, I'm going to try to press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V and it copy pastes the whole thing. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. So, uh, all right. So we have something like previous in here and so on and so forth. Mm -mm -mm. So maybe we want to kind of like a predefine a window, right? So when we're starting with this thing, right? When we're starting with this thing, we need to do like... Um, three iterations to build up the window, if you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Oh, by the way, can I just do shit like this where I press Control X and then uh, just put it like that? Okay, so I can move lines around. That is, ac that is actually pretty convenient. So I really like that. Uh, so here we have we basically take the next value and we update the state and here we evaluate the value so essentially what i want to do i want to predefine the rolling sum window right so i'm going to define 
the following variable i64 sum and initially it's going to be zero uh all right might as well just put it somewhere here okay so once i discovered how to move lines around it actually became way more simpler to work with like holy shit <laughs> Right, because quite often when I work, uh, when I edit in Vim or Emacs, uh, I think in terms of moving lines around rather than characters, and I really, really miss that feature. So now what I do is essentially I just select a particular section, I just Control X and Control V. So like in a classical editor, it almost works like a classical editor, which is really convenient. Uh, all right, so what I want to do, I want to perform like three iterations. Uh, right, I want to perform three iterations, but the question is how can I easily do that? I need to allocate another variable, something like i64, i0, and for i equals 0, less than 3 plus plus i, I essentially need to repeat this thing and add the result to the, um, to the sum, right? So that's what I need to do in here. Uh, so here's the x, and uh, I'm just going to be adding this thing to the sum. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's cool. Mm, 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 mm. That is very, very cool. Mm. So we don't really need i after that, but that's fine. So here we continue, we read the next x, and now I need to essentially um, come up with the with the next sum, right? So I need a variable for the next sum. Uh, so i64 next sum, right? So this is the next sum uh, and next sum is essentially the current sum minus the previous value, basically by previous value, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna call the element at the beginning of the window. Right, so the beginning of the window. And I'm gonna add x, so that acts like the next, uh, you know, the next sum in here. And that acts like the next sum. And in here now, uh, if uh, Fabulous Floor. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you so much for two months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic divine club. Uh, all right, so what we're gonna do, so this is gonna be if the next sum, if the next sum is greater, ooh, this is not particularly convenient, right? So maybe I have to actually keep track of all of the three elements, right? Mm. Didn't consider that. So maybe, yeah, I was hoping that I can just, yeah, I need to keep track of all of the three elements, unfortunately. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I mean, it's just not that difficult to do. Uh, right, so we can have something like A, B, C, and D for the next like fourth element, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So, and in here, uh, I'm gonna just have, I, I'm gonna repeat the same code three times. Uh, right, I'm gonna repeat the same code three times. So first for the uh, A, right, we don't really need this thing anymore, right? Uh, so I wonder if I can just like do something like this. Uh -huh. Cool. So this is going to be first for the A, then we're going to have B, uh, then, oh, what the fuck has happened? Okay, then C, and we don't, not going to do any D, right? We're not going to do any D. So, and in here, uh, when I search for the next one, I'm going to just assign it to D, and the current sum is going to be A, B, C, and the next one is going to be B, C, D, right? So, uh, and essentially, uh, I can actually quite easily check all of them. Uh, so, if the next sum B plus C plus D, right, uh, B plus C plus D is greater than A plus uh, B plus C, I increase the answer Right, and then I basically, uh, you know, reassign everything uh, accordingly. So A becomes B, B uh, becomes C, and C becomes D. Right, so this is the simplest code I can come up with, actually. So, and then we don't really need X anymore. 
uh, right, so here is the size of the whole thing, uh, then the, the parsing state, then the answer. We don't even need previous, right? We don't keep track of the previous. We don't need these things. The only things we need is A, B, C, D, right? So, and that's basically the rolling window in here. Um, mm -mm -mm. And then we increment the answer. And this one is going to be just basically part two. Uh, and I wonder if it's going to work. I'm actually a little bit concerned whether it's going to work. Maybe I want to test that on the um, uh, on the sample data, right? Let's actually try to compile this entire thing. And it kind of worked. It printed 1618, but I'm not sure if that's the correct answer. I'm really not sure if that's the correct answer. I would rather test that on the sample data. Uh, so let's actually take the sample data. And in this case, we have like five. Uh, right, so uh, let's go ahead and just quit the operating system, right, uh, super quick. And uh, I'm going to mount this entire stuff, right? I'm going to mount it. And I'm going to go inside Gachi Hyper. So this is home. Uh, here is the input. And I'm going to do ed. I probably want to do a sudo, right? So ed sample txt. Uh, right, so and what I'm going to put in there... Oh boy, I probably have to prepare this data first. So let, let me copy paste that to uh, to my trusty Emacs. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna remove that. And here we have a new line. Right, so I'm copy pasting. <sighs> Fuck. Uh, one more time. One more time. Mm -hmm. And then I press this, and then I save this entire thing, and then I quit this entire thing. So, and in sample TXT, I have everything in here, and I hope I do have the last new line in here. Okay, so I do have last new line. It's kind of important to have this, uh, have this uh, last new line for the parsing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let me now unmount. Uh, you mount, uh, you mount MNT. Uh, sudo, uh, there we go. So everything seems to be okay. ls mnt, and I'm gonna run the uh, the entire operating system. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me see. Do we have the sample thingy? So here is the sample, and if I take a look inside of it, here is the data, right? So that's the data from the website. So it's really actually kind of cool that I can exchange the data between the host operating system and the guest one. I really like that. Uh, okay, so let's go into AOC 2021 and day one. Uh, okay, so I'm going to extend the window. Uh, all right, so sample. Sample, I'm going to press F5. So there is a five of them, and according to the official data, it's a five sums. Okay, on the sample data, in fact, it works. Everything works on the sample data. The question is, does it really work correctly on the actual input data? Right, on the actual input data, it's 1618. So let's try to submit that, right? I have no reason to not believe that this could be the case. Let's put 1618. We solved the first day in Temple OS from fucking scratch. Let's a fucking go. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, we did it. Uh, so, I, I really need to spend some time actually learning the operating system and learning the editor because that was fucking difficult. That was fucking painful. <laughs> Right. So I also need to learn how to search for different examples and stuff like that. I'm going to spend some time uh, off screen, like going through these tutorials and stuff like that, because it's probably not that interesting to watch. Right. And then maybe the next day, the next day, we uh, the, the entire process is going to be more uh, like more efficient and whatnot. So I also want to publish all of these scripts, uh, you know, um, to the GitLab or something, but I need to think how I want to organize them, right? So I want a script uh, that installs everything and prepares everything. We have scripts that runs everything and also scripts that mounts everything. So uh, yeah, I'm going to put the link to this source code in the description, but the source code is not prepared yet, right? Source code, uh, and I'm going to put TBD in here just to remind myself that I need to do that. Uh, all right, so that was pretty pog, not gonna lie, and we already spent like almost two hours doing that, so we're pretty on time, right? So because I usually two, uh, do two-hour stream. 
All right, I guess that's it for today. That was actually very cool. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Thank you for all of the subscriptions and donations and stuff like that. I especially appreciate that. And I see you all the next time. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stream every, uh, every day. So maybe some of the days I'm gonna do uh, off screen because sometimes I need a time off from streaming because it's actually kind of intensive. So maybe the next day, maybe tomorrow I'm not gonna stream and tomorrow's day is gonna be basically offline. I'm gonna just record myself doing that and then publish it on YouTube, uh, right? So if you're watching it live, um, here is the uh, YouTube channel where I publish uh, all of my recordings. So sometimes I do offline sessions where I don't stream, I just record like offline. So maybe the second day is going to be that. Uh, all right. So thanks everyone for watching and let's maybe rate somebody. Is anyone doing advent of code right now on a science? It's not a science and technology. It's a software development section of Twitch. Uh, all righty. Thanks everyone. That was actually super fun. I really enjoyed that. Holy shit. Mine got. Okay, crowd. So let's wait. Uh, maybe I should stop the temple OS. Maybe it actually hogs the entire machine. So Provot, uh, Provot is streaming. So is he streaming like some software development? I'm okay. He's doing like a Vulcan ray tracing. Okay, so Provot is actually a very cool uh, computer graphics developer, computer graphics hacker. And what he's currently doing, he's actually adding ray tracing support for an open source Half-Life 1 engine using Vulkan. Okay, so that's how cool he is. So we're gonna rate him. Uh, so I'm gonna do rate, Provot. He usually streams in Russian, but he also speaks English. So uh, if he speaks in that weird Klegon language, just ask him to please speak English and he will answer you in English. Uh, all right, so um, let's, uh, let's start the rate. Get ready for the rate, boys and girls. Get ready for the rate. And I see you all and next time. Love you. Mwah.